stories take up time. But I will tell you the yacht story, there are some lessons yes. to be learned. Yes, <laughs> save them in. Okay? <laughs> And I'll try to see in some lessons here, okay? And I would say the first lesson was I had a really lousy making decision strategy, okay? For this whole yacht experience. It's a series of very bad decisions that all rolled up into, you know, an 11-day stint of madness. And it started off with the fact that I had a private jet at the time, and I was sharing with somebody else. So it was in Europe. So I took a commercial plane, myself, my wife, and uh, three other couples. So it was, it was eight of us in all. We landed in Italy, and we got off the baggage section. My limo driver forgot to put my wife's luggage on the plane, and she had no clothes. She was freaking out. She watched, I got, I got. I said, no problem. And I was already stoned out of my mind. Now you have to understand. Now you're stoned out of your mind you on what? On loots? Loots, cocaine, and like five other things. The drug addiction <laughs> I had was so severe. I know. You know, listen. So I said, in reading the book, I felt like I needed to go to drug right, house. For those for who him. don't know, <laughs> for the benefit of your viewers who are normal. <laughs> And haven't been addicted to lewds, thank God for them, right? You know, one lewd is enough to knock out a 220-pound Navy SEAL for eight and a half hours. Wow. I was taking four a day and walking, and walking around. <laughs> like four at a time, walking around. That was because you get immune to them, right? So I was probably four or five lewds deep and already in the airport. And I was like, don't worry, honey, and you're always slurring, right? I'll buy you a bit the American Express commercial. I'll buy you all new clothes, which we did. Spent 80000 got her a whole new wardrobe, and from there we made our way to the yacht. And as we're going down the hill in this limousine, there's eight of us in the limo. One of the girls, I think Ophelia her name was, she's like, why is there like waves in the harbor? And we looked out, and sure enough, there were like these little wavelets in the harbor. When we pulled up to the dock, the captain was out front. And the captain was as crazy as me, by the way. He was, you know, also an action junkie extraordinaire. And my wife runs, runs out of the car with her, all the clothes. What's going on, Captain Mark? What's going on? He's like... Well, you know, there's a, there's a storm, a freak storm kicked up. We, we really shouldn't make the crossing. It'll be, and, she's, and I'm like now, I'm like, wait a second. No, 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 no. I'm in this drug-induced state. I have like ants in my pants, like a drug-induced ant. I, like, I have to move. Like there's different phases of a quail. I'll tell you what they are, you, and your viewers should know this. <laughs> <laughs> is, is this the fourth secret? This is a, this is a, this is a real fourth secret. This is a real fourth secret to go nowhere in life, right? The, four, first, the first phase is the tingle phase, where your fingertips tingle. And all of you who are, who are, who are out there in television and who are doodles, you know this, right? The second thing, okay, is the slur phase, where you start to slur your words, but you don't know that. You think you sound great, right? The third phase is the drool phase, where you're drooling out of the side of your mouth, but your loving life is just as much. And the fourth phase is, is unconsciousness, where you pass out and you wake up somewhere you have no idea where you are. Yeah. Like at the hangover, right? You yeah. Know? Yeah. It's like, okay, <laughs> those are the four phases, right? Then there's a fifth phase, which doesn't really hit you up, and it's called the movement phase, yeah. where you get like you have to move. Now, I was in the movement phase when we got to the boat, and when the captain said we shouldn't go, I was like, absolutely have to make the crossing right now. It's 100 miles to Sardinia. I said to the captain, can we make it? He's like, well, we can make it. It's going to be rough. I said, can we make it? He goes, we can make it. I said, let's go. He's like, all right, let's go. My wife's like, you know, parents is, I'm like, go cut the new tags off your clothes. Come on, go downstairs, right? So we go, get on the boat. I go up to the top deck on the flybridge, and I say to the students, you know, give me one Bloody Mary every seven minutes till I pass out. Give me one every six minutes after that, right? <laughs> so now, an hour and a half later, I take four more lewds. I'm on the top deck, drooling, and now on the top deck, and almost like two hours pass by, and I'm not really track of time, and I wake up to the feeling of sea spray on my face. Now, I'm 50 feet above the water. Oh, wow. I'm like, I'm like, what the hell's going on? All of a sudden, a giant wave, boom, crashes over me. I fall over, and I get back up. I crawl to the side, grab the crow, I look over, I'm like, oh my God, it's like 30-foot waves in the ocean. Like, I've never seen such big waves. I look in back of the boat, and I'm, I'm towing a 40-foot dive boat called the Chandler. My daughter's name is Chandler. I had a little boat with the Chandler, right? And it's disappearing and reappearing, these enormous peaks and troughs of, of, of the Mediterranean Sea. I crawl down the stairs, I make my way into the main salon, and it's complete and utter bedlam. There's decorative plates like flying like frisbees, statues are falling over, and they're in the middle of my seven other guests, six and my wife, and they're huddled in a circle crying, and I crawl over, and I had no idea what was going on, and she says, what's where you killed us? We're gonna sing it. She's freaking out, everyone's just going crazy. We go up to the bridge, we see the captain, I'm like, Captain Mark, what's going on? He goes, well, fuck now. He goes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you did it this time, buddy, you know? Because it's a freak storm, there's going to be 30 foot waves plus, and it's only getting worse. All right? So I turned to my friend Rob, who was crazy as me. I said, Rob, you have any coke on you? He goes, yeah, I got right here. Come on. Because <laughs> this is part of managing your state prior to learning how to do it naturally, this is right? State management. <laughs> state management like said, for this chemicals. Is right. this is right. you know, the, it's like the good, the bad, and the extraordinary in my life, right? So, so anyway, so anyway. 
this I do tell in my, my longer seminars. I need, I need to kill old time and change people's state. People, if I see people yawning, I'm like, all right, story time. <laughs> story time. time. <laughs> you know, away, right? Oh, so you don't just hand out lewds yeah, and coke. Right. Give the stories. <laughs> the story story changes the state. Yeah. Right. So anyway, so um, oh, you know some NLP, right? Yeah, you go, get them back to the moment, right? So anyway, so uh, now we're like an hour up on the bridge just watching, and you can't imagine how rough it is. I mean, you're like, you, it's like the boat is like a thimble. That's the waves are so powerful. And all of a sudden, the captain's like, shit, rogue wave. We're like, what's a rogue wave? Well, the rogue wave is like a 50 foot wall of water comes at us. We start climbing up the face of this wave, up and up like the perfect storm, and bam, lights out. We flip over, okay? It takes us about 30 seconds. The boat rights itself, okay? We all like, we try to get up, and we're like, what happened? What happened? There's one engine running now, and all of a sudden a mate comes up. He goes, We just lost the front porthole. It gave way. We're going down by the head. And the boat starts sinking. And this is 170. It was Coco Chanel's boat. I had a helicopter on the boat, had a seaplane on the I boat. I think we have a picture of the, yeah, um, a, the boat. Yeah, you have a boat that's up here or no? Um, it should be coming up. So I could have had slides up here. See, a, yeah. a slide of a baby oh, and a clock and a family. Unfortunately, the only one, the only one we could find was really bad. Oh, now, it's notice, a very small image. But so there's a, that's a helicopter. That's so a helicopter. That's right a helicopter. There. A seaplane? Yeah. Hang on, a helicopter and a seaplane. Seaplane in back of it. And isn't it funny how hell no, so, so, this whole thing with slides you do? So anyway, so it's a very right, yeah, right. That's the boat. Not a really good picture of the no. boat, but there, these are still the only one we This is like find. jet skis and whatever. Yep. Okay. So anyway, so uh, we the, we're going down. The captain's like mayday, mayday, right? They send out a helicopter from the, the Italian Coast Guard, right? And you know, I think I love Italian people, but like, you know, I don't know if you want to be rescued by them. I think you know, <laughs> maybe the Germans would make better rescuers. You figure, right? They're very precise and stuff, yeah. right? Right? You know, I'm married to an Italian girl, a couple, two, two Italian, well, whatever. Okay. <laughs> You're not uh, really helping the cause no, there. No, 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 anyway. No. Okay, so anyway, I try to in increase relations with the other countries. Okay. So anyway, so. Uh, they bring out the cop chop and they try to lower down a basket. It's going 100 feet this way, 100 feet that No, not happening, all right? Finally, the three hours, they pull away. We're stuck again. Now, meanwhile, in front of us are giant oil tankers. They're boxing us in because we're sinking. So the law of the sea is when you are sinking, everyone tries to help. So we're at this tanker in front, tankers on the side, right? Finally, six hours later, we get a call. They're sending out the Italian Navy SEALs. Now, this is serious. We all have to go up to the top of the deck, right? And they're gonna wait, you know, they're gonna come rescue us. We see this giant double-bladed Chinook helicopter coming at us, painted military green. The captain goes, I just got word. We have to push the helicopter off the top of the deck to make room because they're gonna land the commando. I'm like, you're shitting me. He's like, no. I'm like, all right, let's do it. So we actually took a video. We're like, hey, we're pushing the helicopter off the top of the deck, right? So we had one. I love your priorities because you got, you got the, let's put it, like, oh, let's take a video I'll tell you about of it. Priorities yeah. In a second. <laughs> <laughs> priorities is that you're not, you, I'm going to give you a lesson in priorities, in, in the wrong priorities in a second, right? One, two, three, we push the helicopter over the side of the boat, okay? Yeah. And we're watching it go down. It's like, really amazing. Then the captain turns to us. We're all 18 of us. It was, eight, 11, it was 11 crew. It was wow. 19 all together, right? He's like, here's the thing. We can only take what we can carry. So we had, I had like a quarter million in cash on the boat. I had artwork. I had jewelry. I turned to my friend Rob. I said, you got the drugs, right? He's like, no, I thought you had the drugs. I'm like, no. I said, Rob, you got to go downstairs. He goes, I'll, go, I'll get them. He goes downstairs. He comes back a minute later. He goes, I can't, your cabin's flooded. It's, I got shocked. The water's electrified. I'm like, soldier, you can do it. He's like, you're right. What was I thinking? He takes off his shoes. He goes down. He comes back with a bag of 100 quails and third degree burns on his feet. Okay. We go up to the top deck. Okay. They lower a commando down. He has a spear gun and he... He actually spears the top of that, rappels down, okay? Now the order of exit off the boat is women guests first, women crew members second, male guests third, male crew members fourth, captain last. Logical, right? First person off the boat, my wife, the owner's wife, she was a mother of two, right? Second person off the boat was another woman who's had a baby. Third person off the boat is supposed to be a woman, but one of my friends who's on the boat, he panics and he pushes the woman over the side and he jumps. You see people's, it's amazing to see yeah. him. He jumps and, he, and I look at my friend Rob, I'm like, this is, we have to kill him the rest of his life. We can abuse him about this moment. This is the best thing ever. Okay. I wrote that in the book. The guy hates me. So anyway, you, know, <laughs> you see things on the internet. You know, Jordan is a douchebag. You know it's from that guy. <laughs> you know it's from that guy. <laughs> okay. So I guess the internet's powerful. Yeah. So anyway, so they rescue us. The captain goes down with the ship. They pluck him out of the water. They end up landing us on an aircraft carrier, and we get the. And they're very nice. The Italians are the best people to rescue because when they rescue, they want to feed you. So next thing I know, we're, sick, we're eating prosciutto and melon, drinking red wine. I take two more loads, and I'm dancing with the Italian Navy. I pass out again, and wake up now. I'm in Sardinia. 
They take us to Sardinia. It's a beautiful hotel, and they made a big deal over it. They, you know, were very nice. And we spent 10 days in Sardinia. I had to buy everybody clothes again. Wife's now on round two. She had no clothes again. I had to buy everybody clothes. We spent 10 days in Sardinia. On the last night, now, mind you have a private jet, right, which was in France. It was in Charles de Gaulle Airport. And it was flying. That morning, it was, going to go from, it was cheaper to keep it in Charles de Gaulle. It's going to pick us up in Sardinia, right? So the night before, I'm like, you know, do we really want to ship all this? Do we really want to take all this stuff back? Customs is going to be a nightmare. Let's just ship it all back DHL. Reasonable idea. So we all boxed up all our clothes. No clothes now. We just have toothpaste and underwear, right? Ship it all out. We go to the airport. Now, the thing about a private jet, you've been on private jets, you said. They're there waiting for you. The whole beauty of a private jet is when you get there, it's there. We get to the airport, no private jet. I'm like, what the hell? So we're waiting for like a half hour. And the worst part of all is the drugs were gone. So there was no reason to be in a foreign country anymore, right? <laughs> so I'm waiting for this an hour and a half, no jet. Finally, some little midget comes scampering up to me. A midget was in the airport, right? And he's like, he was an Italian Sardinian midget, and he came up work, work, working for me. It's true, you know? Okay. And, uh, and he's like, Mr. Belfort. I'm like, yeah, he goes, plane crash. I'm like, what? My yacht and my plane gone in 10 days. Can you imagine the plane crashed, taking off out of Orly Airport. Wow. A seagull, a Charles Gaulle, a seagull flew in the engine, plane went down, the pilots lived. So now I have a, a lost a plane and a boat. You think I would have taken this as a sign that yeah. I should calm down and change my course, right? Yeah. But I didn't because I was addicted to drugs. In fact, I ended up trying to commit suicide a year later after overdosing on, you know, massive quantities of cocaine. And this, and this is what interests me, and I was saying this yeah. to you before the show, is that my father committed suicide, mm -hmm. you know, and, that, and that my real interest is what makes people shift. What makes, how do you go one way? I remember reading in a book of Dennis Rodman, the basketball player for Chicago Bulls, that he was sitting in a, the cab of his truck and he had the, you know, the gun in his mouth ready to actually kill himself. And a voice said, don't kill this Dennis, kill the other Dennis, meaning kill the Dennis that is mm -hmm. the one that you don't want to be. The yeah. one that is causing the stress, and mm -hmm. be the real you. Be just be real you. Mm -hmm. And I, that changed my life. Reading that, what was it that has um, helped you go from, you know, money laundering, the drugs, the prostitution, all of that stuff, to then being put in jail, yeah, and and then serving time, mm -hmm. coming out, and being able to just because we all tell limiting stories. We all tell. We all have these limiting beliefs of oh, I did this and. You know, like I, we hold ourselves back. Yeah, of course. You, ha you have a lot that could yeah. have held you back. Yeah. And yet, yeah. you managed to reconcile. My understanding is um, you have, is it reparate? Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Was it, um, you know, where you, you. Yeah, I paid a lot of it back and I still pay, pay money back. But I'll, I'll tell you what it was for me, just so you know. And everybody's different, okay? When I came out of jail, I had so many limiting beliefs about what I could do with my life you know, after making the mistakes that I made. And here's the thing about your past. And once you can, if there's one thing that your viewers, if there's one thing that you can actually get from all this, one distinction, it's that no matter what happened to you in your past, you are not your past. Mm. You are the resources and capabilities you glean from it. Mm. You are not your past. You are the resources and capabilities you glean from it. And that is the basis for all change because the